talk about faith, and I'm sure some of you are thinking, well, we're in church, so what else is new? But we're actually going to look at the beginning of the faith chapter. And the faith chapter in Scripture, does anybody know what that chapter is off the top of your head? Or does he already have it up there? Hebrews, Hebrews what? That, it's up there, isn't it? <laughs> okay. See, I can't see that, so. You're one of those guys. Right? Jeremy, right? Yeah. I'm just, okay, I got it. Yeah, so Hebrews chapter 11. And we're actually going to look at the first three verses of Hebrews chapter 11. I think these three verses actually really mean a lot. And to me, the first verse is actually a very amazing verse when you really look at it into the details. But if we can understand what these three verses say, it can really kind of help us make... Uh, have life make sense. And how many of you have ever gotten into a faith or religious conversation with your friends or co-workers and it was actually getting pretty deep? Or you had one of those deep conversations? I mean, it was getting into some really intense discussions and then when you were left, you were kind of like, whoa. You know, I can't believe we just had that type of conversation. I've been in some of those discussions, especially when I was in seminary. And you would get to talking, and before you know it, time has flown by because of the subject matter and just the, the debate. And I love those conversations. that They don't happen all the time. Um, but when they do, they're very, very stimulating me because I, I like to debate. I like to argue. Um, I, I kind of made the joke at my very first year. It's going to be two years in November. But that first year, we went to, I think it was New Year's Eve at Wayne's house. And I think poor David... Um, got in a discussion with me about free-range chickens, and I think it lasted about 40 minutes. I argued it with him, because to me, every chicken that's born is free-range until you put it in a box. So then all chickens are free-range, and he got to the debate about, well, no, free-range chickens, they walk around, and they eat the grass. I said, so now you're telling me it's a dietary thing. So really, it's born free-range, you just changed its diet. So is that not a free-range chicken? <laughs> So by the end, after 40 minutes of him being totally frustrated with my debate, he said, you are right, they are all free-range chickens. I said, thank you. Because I said, to me, changing someone's diet doesn't change how they are, right? I, I'm Scottish, Scotch-Irish. If I change my diet, I'm still Scotch-Irish. The free-range chicken still a free-range chicken. Do you change his diet? It's still a free-range chicken. So those types of debates, I can sit there and argue forever on any topic. I don't even need to believe the side I'm arguing. I can, just, I can still just debate it. It's, it's what I do, so I find that stuff stimulating. I'm kind of hoping that this message today, that these three little verses will stimulate your mind today, that maybe at the end of the day you're going to go, whoa. So we're going to look at Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 3. Um, you can follow along on the screen, your, any device you may have, or just listen as I read. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 3. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Now the first verse is kind of telling you what faith is, and this is kind of a verse that a lot of people tend to memorize or can at least rip off as kind of a mantra. <laughs> they may not get the exact wording right, but they kind of get the gist. And it kind of be, is that saying what people argue or debate and say what faith is. But today is not a memorization test. It's not a Bible quiz. Today we want to see if you truly grasp the concept of what these three verses say, especially that first verse. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for. Now, that is the first part of this first verse. And actually, they corrected me because the first service I was saying, sure. I guess it's sure instead of sure. <laughs> Those of you who remember, I pronounce R's funny. So, is it sure or sure? Sure. Sure. Not sure. It's sure. Okay, we're going back to sure. <laughs> it was, I was told it was sure the first service, so we're going back to sure. All right. So, now, faith is... Being sure of what we hope for, for now look at that for, and this and and that's the first part of this first verse. So the very key word there. How many of you listened to the teaser video on Wednesday? What's the key word in that first part of that? What is it? Sure, yes, sure is a key word. So faith is being sure. I'm gonna go with sure. I'm going back to sure. 
So what do we know about the word sure? Sure means positive, definite, without a doubt, no questions asked. When you say you are sure of something, there's no questions asked. You are definitely positive. You know what you're talking about. So faith is being positive about something. So what are we positive about? The next part says what we hope for. So to have faith, we have to be sure of what we hope for. So now the next question, as Christians or believers in Jesus Christ, what is it that we hope for? We hope for Jesus' return and spend eternity with him in heaven. Is that not kind of what we expect? But that's what we talk about when we think of the resurrection. We think about Jesus' return. Um, his believers will be gathered with him, new heaven, new earth, and spend eternity with him. So when we say we are sure of what we hope for, we say we are sure, we are positive in Jesus' return, and that we will spend eternity with him. So how many of you are that sure? Without a doubt, positive. If so, that is faith. Now, when you say, yeah, Pastor Mark, you know what? I believe. If we have faith, then those little stimulating conversations I talked about in the opening, they have a little more certainty to them when you're having those conversations. It's easy to have a conversation on something you are sure about. Like all chickens are free range. So I am sure that when they are born, they are free range. So I can have that debate and in the end make Dave crumble after 40 minutes of saying, you know what? This is New Year's Eve. I've got better things to be doing than having this argument. But when you are sure of something, you can talk about it and feel confident in everything that you are saying. So when you die, are you going to get, go to heaven? If your answer is, I hope so, that doesn't sound too sure. It doesn't sound too positive in what we hope for. Now, some people like to approach Christ as fire insurance. Um, they will go through the motions and say they believe just in case there is a heaven and a hell and they don't want to burn. Now, I'll be talking about fire insurance a lot more next week because I actually will be doing a sermon about hell next week. So I'm not going to focus on it too much. But that whole true faith is not fire insurance. It's true faith is knowing where we are going because we are sure. Now, that brings us to the second part of verse 1. Look. We just have that much about the first part of verse 1. Now, the second part of verse 1, it says, We are certain of what we do not see. Certain is a word just like sure. Certain means we are, again, without a doubt, definite, no questions asked, positive. We are certain. When we say we are certain of what we cannot see, we are saying, without a doubt, that God exists. And Jesus Christ died for our sins. We are that certain. We can't visibly see God or Jesus or the Holy Spirit, but we are certain that they exist. Now, some of us will know that our eyes can play tricks on us, right? Blurry, clear, blurry, clear, right? Um, I actually, I love magicians. I don't know how many of you watch magicians. Sue bears with me as I watch Penn and Tellers, Fool Us. I don't know how many of you watched that. But you know they're not actually doing magic. What they are doing is making your eyes see something that's not there. They do something over here while they're you know, quickly doing something somewhere else. So the whole idea of our eyes being tricked, you know, they say um, eyewitness testimony is the most unreliable testimony in a criminal trial. Because our eyes can be deceived, our eyes can be fooled. So when we say certain of what we cannot see, sometimes what we can see is not really what we think we see anyway. Now, so when we talk about we can't visibly see God or Jesus or the Holy Spirit, but we are certain that they exist, we see their effects around us all the time. We see them in the things around us in the world. When we talk about the wind, DC talks of, sings this in one of their songs, you can't see the wind, but you can see the effects of the wind. You can see the trees blow or, or leaves falling because of wind, but you cannot actually see the wind. So when we talk about being able to see God around us, it's not visibly seeing God, but seeing the effects God has when you see creation, when you see how the Holy Spirit has worked in our lives or your life, you can see those effects. But now when we talk about those discussions, 
those debates, those conversations. When you're talking about God, if you're truly certain, then you should be able to talk about your faith because it's something that you believe in and something that you're totally positive about. When you really know something, like how to fix a car, how to build something, maybe do a craft, play an instrument, um, able to sing. When you are able to do something and you can do it well, you can talk about it with certainty. You can talk about it um, knowing that you are sure with the information you are given because you are that positive, you are that confident, because you know it is something that you can do and you can do well. When we're talking about conversations about faith, if we are that sure and that certain, these are conversations we should be able to have with complete confidence in everything that we're saying. Faith is being sure and certain about God, about the promises that God has made and the promises that he has already kept. We have faith, so we are sure and certain, because God has proven that he is trustworthy and that the things he says will happen will actually happen. So does your faith stand up for being that sure and that certain? Verse 2 talks about the ancients being commended for their faith. And this is basically referring to um, some of the great people of the Old Testament that God used to do his work. Most of those stories we've heard, um, you might have heard them in, in children's church, vacation Bible school, school um, any of the different things in which you see children's lessons. Uh, these are stories like Cain and Abel, Noah, Abraham, Moses, some of the great people. If you read uh, chapter 11 of Hebrews, it'll list a lot of the stories and how these ancients, these Old Testament people stepped out in faith. And how because they stepped out in faith, God fulfilled the promises that he had with them. Then the third verse is talking about creation and that because of our faith, we know, we're certain, we're sure that God created the universe with his command. Now, in today's world of science, um, carbon dating, Big Bang theories, ancient aliens, and so many other theories about how the universe began or was created, how many of us are certain and sure that God created the universe as we know it? Faith says that we are without a doubt. But now as I said, God created the universe as we know it. I didn't get into the debate if it's six 24-hour days or, or, or that, but are we sure and certain that God created the universe as we know? When you look and you see the world around us, do you see God in the unexplainable? I always like the Robin Williams joke about the platypus. You know, God created the platypus to make evolutionists go crazy. You know, hey, I'm going to take a mammal, put a bill on it, give it the tail of a beaver, and I'm going to make it lay eggs. Figure that one out, Darwin, right? So when we think about creation and the things around us, so I know that Christians would love for ancient artifacts to be found by archaeologists just so they could say, see, there's your proof. You know, we would love for Noah's Ark to be found, right? Maybe a bunch of chariots in the bottom of the Red Sea. Maybe the Ark of Covenant being located somewhere besides an Indiana Jones movie. Now, wouldn't that be cool? How many of you would love for that to happen? Raise a hand. All right? I'll be honest, I used to feel that way too. Until I really looked at these verses, especially verse 1. If those artifacts were found and people believed because now there was physical evidence, we just removed faith from the equation. God wants us to have faith because we believe in him and what he has passed down to us and what he has promised. God can make everyone love him and believe in him, but that is not true faith. Love is best when it's freely given and not forced. That is why God gave man free will, so man could choose to love God, which means a whole lot more. So God could present all the artifacts that the scientists could ever want, but that is no longer faith in what we cannot see. Instead, that's belief in physical evidence. Faith is so much more than being shown something. It is certainly that cannot be taken away.
And that is God, what God wants from his believers. So I hope today, kind of just looking at these verses from the faith chapter, kind of put faith in a whole new level for you. It takes a lot more faith to believe in something you can't see, but, you, but that you are certain and sure of, without a doubt. God have proven, has proven that he is truthful and he has fulfilled his promises. True faith does not need the physical evidence as proof. We know, if we truly know, that God exists and that we will have eternity with him, that is faith. If you are not quite there yet, I just encourage you to continue your walk and study God's word. Because he is waiting to help make you absolutely sure of what we hope for certain of what we do not see. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we think about faith and so many challenges, Lord, we, we know that you have the power. You could bring up every artifact that you wanted. You could um, make everyone love you, but we know you want love that's freely given. That's why you've given us free will to make choices. And we know, Lord, that you want faith that who can, who can read and see the promises that you fulfilled and don't necessarily need to see the physical evidence. But we also know that you affect us like the wind, through the Holy Spirit, through, G through Jesus, and just through your creation, Lord. We can see your effect around us. We can see your effect moving within us. And with that, we can see our faith with certainty that you do exist. And that we know you fulfill, will fulfill your promises. And with that, we know that Jesus will return. New heaven, new earth, and eternity with you. So Lord, for those who still are searching, seeking, we ask, Lord, that you just help them in that journey. Let the Holy Spirit go to work. That they too may be sure, uh, sure and certain in their faith. Lord, this is in your all-powerful name. Amen.